The United States has 5,244 nuclear weapons and a whole bunch of different ways to move them. Some can be fired from the ground, others from submarines. Some can be dropped from planes, and others are just collecting dust. But all of these systems for moving nuclear weapons are systems for deploying them. As in, that's how we move them from here in Montana to here where the bad people are. But what about when we need to transport nuclear weapons without blowing them up? Well, it turns out that moving a warhead from one part of the United States to another is like a whole thing. So you know the drill, we'll explain the thing, and then we'll tell you to go buy something, and then about 2% of you will buy it, and then I'll give my writer Ben some money to go buy more croissants, which he needs to live. Here we go! Nuclear warheads in the United States live here, in the 450 or so missile silos in Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and North Dakota, with a few spread out in other states. But throughout their lives, these warheads also sometimes need to be here, 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 or here. And at this point, you probably have the same question that I did when I started writing this video. Why exactly are we moving nuclear warheads in the first place? It's not like we're using them. This must only happen like every few decades. And you'd be right if you just replaced every few decades with several times a week, which I guess means that you weren't very right at all. The US Department of Energy moves warheads all the time, and it is precisely because we aren't doing anything with them that they have to be moved so often. You see, the delicious plutonium center of every nuclear warhead has an expiration date, a point past which it won't detonate reliably, and the problem is, we don't really know when that expiration date is. So instead of rolling the dice on World War III, the Department of Energy has started the process of recycling and replacing the plutonium in each of these warheads, and that means bringing them from their silos to one of these locations for disassembly, reassembly, maintenance, or testing. But the question is, how do you get a warhead from here to here, safely, multiple times a week? Surely we don't just bring a nuclear bomb onto a public interstate highway and no, we do do that, don't we? Yes, in fact, here is a map of the interstates that the Department of Energy uses to transport their warheads. But it's not quite that simple because bringing a nuclear bomb onto a public interstate highway requires a carefully coordinated operation that is almost entirely classified, except for the fact that this Department of Energy nuclear warhead transportation training video ended up on YouTube somehow, and now I can tell you exactly how it works. The warhead itself is first loaded into one of these. I know one of these, you might be saying, that's called a truck. But oh, dear simple viewer, you have once again been fooled by the US Department of Energy Office of Secure Transportation, because that is no simple truck. That is a US safeguards transporter, and this grainy picture is actually one of the only verified photos of one in existence. While they're designed to look like a typical 18-wheeler, with no recognizable markings and an ununiformed driver, they are anything but. The entire truck is bulletproof, with 12-inch steel doors, invulnerable tires, and can sit directly in the middle of a fuel fire for up to 60 minutes without the cargo taking any damage. The axles will explode if an attacker tries to tow it, and the entire trailer will fill itself with a rapidly expanding foam if the truck goes off-axis. It's also equipped with various ways to kill you, the details of which the Department of Energy still refuses to disclose, though independent journalists have found good evidence for at least two. It can electrocute you to death, and by reading through the DOE's contract with an Australian arms manufacturer from 2005, we're pretty sure that it has a robotic 40mm turret that is designed to quote, distribute large quantities of ammunition over a large area in an extremely short time frame. So no, it's not really a truck. But even with its fancy foams and turrets, this truck looking thing is only one part of moving the warhead. Every safeguards transporter moves as part of a convoy alongside two or three other unmarked and armored emergency response vehicles, one of which acts as the convoy's command center, an aerial support which can conduct surveillance, or like every other part of the convoy, kill you super dead. Each one of these vehicles is operated by armed OST agents, which is a federal agency you're probably not familiar with, but all you really need to know is that you probably shouldn't try to steal one of their cars. Every single one of these agents has Q clearance, the highest level of clearance that the Department of Energy can issue, and they also have the authority to directly enforce 28 federal laws, most of which allow them to, you guessed it, kill you. These agents can also, in the event of an emergency, create what's called a national security area, which essentially allows them to put any non-federal land in the United States under the control of the Department of Energy, regardless of who owns it. So these agents, empowered to kill you and steal your house, escort the safeguards transporter along a classified, predetermined route, which is monitored at all times by the Emergency Control Center in Albuquerque. This center is responsible for contacting all of the local law enforcement departments along the route to give them a sort of vague message about a special mission that they're not allowed to know about and definitely shouldn't mess with. In the event that local police do encounter the convoy, tensions might be a little high given that both parties have guns and one of them has a nuclear bomb, so the emergency control center can give both parties what's called a sign countersign, where the police state a code word and the OST agents respond with another code word. 
And all of these elements and procedures need to come together flawlessly in order to get the cargo from point A to point B. So it's a good thing that our nuclear warheads are in the hands of an agency that truly does not mess around. Unless you consider drinking on the job messing around or threatening to kill each other messing around or being severely understaffed and not having the money for weapons training anymore messing around. But they sure don't seem so. And I'm not in the business of disagreeing with people who, again, can legally kill me and take my ass. Anyway, it would seem that I have once again written a video that probably wouldn't have been possible if I were not using NordVPN. And it's not just because Nord encrypted and anonymized my internet connection when I was Googling how to transport nuclear bomb and how to hijack Department of Energy emergency response vehicle, but also because it enabled me to do a lot of research on sites that I might not otherwise have had access to. Lately, for my other channel, I've been traveling in Europe, and back in 2018, the EU rolled out a whole new set of internet regulations to protect European citizens' data. But instead of complying with those regulations, a lot of American websites to just take the easy route and block all of Europe instead. Normally, there would be no way for me to use those sites until I got back to the US, but with Nord, I was just one click away from changing my location to the US and browsing with ease. And better yet, Nord ensured that all of my research was completely safe and protected. When you're traveling and using public Wi-Fi, you're taking a dangerous gamble. It's easy to connect to the wrong network and lose your data, your files, or even your identity. So if you use the internet while you travel, or even anywhere outside of your home, I can't recommend Nord VPN enough. By signing up with my link, you'll get a huge discount and you'll also get four extra months free with a two-year subscription. And hey, if you end up not finding any use for it, it's no problem. Nord offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just click the button on screen or follow the link in the description and try Nord today.